Hello, you're about to listen to a section of the 82nd HatchetJob.com gaming netcast in which we discuss the Xbox racing game Fuel. Now, I want to make it clear that this is not a review. We don't give scores. We don't appraise it like other shows. We really do discuss what it means to play it, good things, bad things, mechanics, how it's generated, and so on. And this was part of a larger show about procedurally generated worlds. So if you're looking for an 8 out of 10 score, this isn't the show for you. But if you like what you hear and you want to hear more intelligent gaming discussion, head over to hatchetjob.com. Anyway, on with the show. Okay, so I guess the intent was to create this crazy, open, uh, enormous uh, playground to race a lot uh, and, and, and have a blast. And I guess the downside is that they didn't really have a fantastic racing model, you know, like for the physics of the car. Um, and the system by which you uh, move on and get more things is is kind of frustrating because it's uh, attached to the racing system, and the racing system's not that great. Um, so as as it was intended to be, the game is doesn't work. I think everyone pretty much agrees that you don't get into it. Well, this is a fantastic racing game, and you play it for hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah, it, it was uh, a racing game that basically they said the thing is it's an enormous world, and you race from A to B, but you can take any shortcut you want to. But then every race that I've done so far, I haven't done that many because it's not fun, but is is very checkpoint heavy. So if you made any alternative decision um, that you couldn't in a different game that was more linear, but now you can, it's a mistake. Right, like you're gonna miss the next checkpoint, so you can't win. So, like for all intents and purposes, all that enormous land out there—I can't remember the size of it—but it's what it's, uh, uh, the, the back of the box says. It's fourteen thousand square kilometers, which is about five and a half thousand square miles. Yeah, so I mean, you, there's a lot to play with. It's just sitting out there, and you can, you know, take a swerve to the left instead of finishing the race and go explore it all. Uh, but then, if you if you don't do the races, you're just farting around. There's like nothing to do, right? You can smash into barrels to get money, which you would use to buy more vehicles, but you can't until you unlock them by racing, <laughs> which I don't want to do. Um, I think that's it, right? You just drive. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just driving, uh, which oddly enough is very pleasant. So I feel that my, what, $15 was not misspent because, uh, I don't know, yesterday we spent probably what, two hours. Yeah, I spent 15 just- hours in it so far and yeah. i mean the how we came to end up playing it guys is that so uh, we were having it having a discussion on xbox live about uh, open world games and so on size of games and dan joe mentioned this racing game you heard of where uh, had a uh, procedurally generated terrain okay so fuel is so big that it would fit on several blu-ray discs let alone a 360 uh, disc so what they've done is there isn't actually terrain as in modelled on the disc. When you, when you play a game or when you restart a game, it says generating in the corner. So that's how it's able to be so big. And then Danjo mentioned a, a, a YouTube video, which I'll link to uh, in the notes for the show, about a guy who discusses fuel. And he basically goes through how he thinks the code has generated its terrain. And his point was that they had one foot technology and put the wrong game in it. Lupus, what's what's your Im- impression of it? Uh, well, pretty much the same. Where it's it's fun to drive around, and it's vertically interesting in that you'll end up coming across cliffs and whatnot as you're driving along that are dangerous to say the least. But I know, like when we both of us were playing, we often a couple of times just trying to get to a place, we'd end up going down a cliff and having essentially trapped ourselves because our vehicles weren't able to necessarily get back up the hillside it does feel quite the world feels quite natural in that it's clearly not designed for vehicles in many instances at least no vehicle that you've got hold of which yeah doesn't really work for a racing game here's a racing game you can't actually race it's just (laughs) for farting around like that i i don't think that hurts it at all right that if there was no friction at all, if you could just go in the same direction and not even look at the screen, well, then it wouldn't be interesting. But to say that, oh, I have a goal, and oops, there was a ravine I didn't see, we have to figure out how to get out of it. Um, I, I, that's kind of what I find pleasant. It starts, and, and Jake, I, I did send an email around mentioning the game. Uh, given that it was $10 or so, what were your thought processes? What kind of made you think, okay, I, this is, isn't something well, I'm going to Initially, uh, actually, before the game came out, I was following 
some of the coverage on it, and it looked it looked exciting. It sounded great. Um, but then, yeah, once once people's reviews came out, and it, the 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 consensus was that it was sort of a road trip simulator almost. <laughs> um, uh, you know, my my enthusiasm waned pretty fast. Um, and I think when you sent the email out, it was just a matter of wow, I just there's too many games to play. I don't know if I can yeah. spare the time to drive around <laughs> yeah, the desert for a few hours. Road trip simulator actually sounds much more interesting than what Danja described, though. <laughs> That's true. That That's would be true. good. You just yeah, you drive for about an hour, and then you pull over and take a leak. And there's something weirdly uh, intriguing about all of those semi truck si- simulators that yeah. are like, oh, drive drive across Europe. It's like, oh, it sounds kind of fun for some reason. Uh, but yeah, just the the screenshots from Fuel looked pretty pretty flat. Occasionally, the game looks uh, astounding, right? And I, the world basically goes from daytime to dusk, and then and then uh, dusk is totally red. So it's like the end of the world. The whole world is all blood red. And then you get all these psychedelic mixtures of colours like blues and purples. And so at one point I was riding uh, along this kind of ravine. And then the ravine below me were trees. And the trees were coming up to the... just above the road level. Okay? And everything was dark. And it's actually dark enough to make it hard to drive. But everything was dark. But the whole ravine was bathed in a purple and blue fog uh, and the trees were silhouetted and it was like uh, like something out of uh, like 1970s van airbrush art <laughs> <laughs> or, or or Ralph Bakshi actually made me think of Ralph Bakshi's version of the Lord of the Rings cartoon oh wow yeah it really was I mean Dan Joe, you, you kind of didn't believe us when we were talking about it then when you played it you really changed your tune well, I, st- I still don't. I don't like the night. Seventies <laughs> um, like, disco this... tune. I don't like the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, are there are there planets in the sky? By the way, because that would that would might change my mind. <laughs> I think it's places as a a game where you you play it when you're doing something else, and then if you can get your friend in, what Lupus and me did uh, is we set a waypoint which was about an hour away because you know it takes it take two or three hours to cross the map horizontally and because we were going for the same location our paths intersected and we came across each other but because we weren't on the same route we weren't always in sight of each other so and all weirdly there's no rear view mirror in the game you can have to turn your camera around or just look at your gps and so i suddenly see lupus's arrow pop out of nowhere and then he'd fly across in front of me uh, skid around a bit and then he'd be gone because he'd be taking another route and then 10 or 15 minutes later I might see him again um, and I've never had that experience in a, in a racing game because normally in racing games you you will always know where your opponent is yeah it, it's enjoyable when you're driving around but there's so many times where it feels like I'm driving this the same place I've always already been but I, I know that I'm an hour away from the other place really yeah yeah mm-hmm. like there's rep- a lot of repetition it, it is procedurally in... generated right i would expect that that would happen right yeah i guess it's just because of the uh the world is relatively empty except for other than trees you have these buildings these uh like barns and whatnot that are feel like they're just sort of pasted into the world every so often <laughs> they're almost always the same the sand farmers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I felt like I, I did. I have seen some of the same buildings uh, repeated, but uh, I don't know. That's that. That almost feels natural. Like if you go on a road trip, you see the same buildings, especially in like the the uh, the rural areas. Uh, so that doesn't bother me so much. And I never really felt like I was in the same place when I knew that I wasn't. Um, mm. One thing I really like about it is that, again, it for no real reason, they've done a really impressive job at procedurally generating this area because it feels like if you just haul ass in one direction, I feel like I stay in a kind of like a biome just long enough to get a very solid feeling for it, and then I'm in, I'm in something either slightly or completely different. There's lots of variation in uh, the type of place that you are, right? So it's kind of difficult to go off screenshots and say, well, it looks very flat. I was like, well, yeah, there's plenty of flat places. But if it's flat, 
you're going to be going through it 90 miles per hour. It's not going to last that long, and then you're going to hit more mm. interesting stuff. So it's just it's very pockmarked with with variation that uh, I I find impressive. Yeah, and there's also no loading whatsoever. You could drive for 14 and a half thousand square kilometers without any loading. Yeah, there's something weirdly satisfying about terrain changing and passing through into a different area, isn't there? But is that I don't know what what you guys are you know what, what sounds like the kind of ideal feeling you'd want while playing this game would be something like the cross country driving in yeah. San Andreas, mm. which is my favorite part of that game. Just you know, oh, I'm just gonna take a trip across the country. Um, but is there just not enough to do when you get there, so to speak? To m- nothing at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Jake, if you had a friend that you hadn't spoken to in a while and you wanted a game to play together and let's say he he wasn't up to speed on the games that you, you liked um, mm-hmm. or he couldn't afford them would a £10 or say $15 game where you could put it in and you could both play and just chat over the internet would that not be appealing at all? You know, I'm not a big conversationalist during gaming kind of thing like i hear a lot of people you know i have some friends who play world of warcraft and they would only log in just to talk to their friends Mm. right from you know you know back back home or whatever um and i've never really done anything like that so so i'm not you know it sounds like you will get online and have a two-hour conversation with somebody while sort of idly entertaining yourself with with something else in the background yeah but i've never really done that does, so. does that make me casual in your eyes jake <laughs> no no i think it's just a different i think it's just a different <laughs> in in my eyes that's, that's, yeah it's another You're using it as a bit of a loaded term don't you think i i, I might be see from i think i think we've really come to to grips with what jake is now he seems friendly and pleasant <laughs> but actually for him Games are all business. That's what it is. You've got your game face on when you turn on your computer, isn't that right, Jake? That's right. That's right. Uh, basically, humans are just you know a better AI. 